morning. I welcome you this morning to this gathering for worship and for the sacred opportunity to witness the ordination and commissioning of the Reflectors of Holiness session. In that the first part of this service is very, very solemn. We would ask that you refrain from cheering or clapping until later in the program. Following the worship of our tithes and offering, there will be a wonderful opportunity for us to celebrate as the new lieutenants re-enter the hall and march down the aisles. So I thank you in advance for being sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading throughout the meeting this morning. When he speaks to you, friends, my prayer is that you will hear and respond to him. God bless you.
gather here because God appeared to Moses in the burning bush and said, I am sending you. Because Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Because the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, Before I form you, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrate you. Because Jesus said as he called his first disciples, Follow me. And the fishermen left their nets and followed him. We gather because there are some among us whom God has called to join in ministry with all the prophets, priests, and teachers before them. God, God was surely, surely with, with them, them and, and is surely with, with us this day. day. Thank you for that call to worship this morning. Our opening song that we'll be singing is, Who is on the Lord's Side? This hymn, written in 1877 by Francis Havergal, asks a question that we are invited to answer today. Who is on the Lord's Side? The hymn is related to the story of Moses when he returned from communing with God on Mount Sinai and found the Israelites worshiping a golden calf. He went to the gates of the camp and called out, Who is on the Lord's side? Come unto me. I invite you to think about this question and the implications of your answer as you consider and sing the words of this song. I invite you to stand and we'll sing on all four verses after an introduction from the band.
You may be seated. Cadets, I'm going to mess with the lighting just a second and I'm going to move. Cadets, and I heard them upstairs going, oh no, he moved. This is the last time I will get to address you as cadets. That's a, uh, a moment where when you as leaders will have these kinds of moments that you'll want to say something amazingly profound. <laughs> and by the time it's all said and done, you realize somebody's already said it <laughs> much more profoundly than you could ever have said it. And I have such a statement for you today. It actually comes from General Bramwell Booth in a work he entitled, Why and Wherefore. As he described officership, he said about officers, they must not only feel that they are responsible for the command of the Corps, but that they are responsible to God for the salvation of the souls of every man, woman, and child in the town or district to which they have been appointed. That is my charge to you this morning, that you're responsible to God for every soul in the community to which you are being sent. Commissioner Zeigelhart, members of the cabinet, the territorial executive council, soldiers, friends, and family of the Salvation Army Southern Territory, it is my honor to present to you the cadets of the Reflectors of Holiness session. Just under some 730 days ago, these 24 individuals arrived on the campus of the Evangel and Booth College, wide-eyed and uncertain of what their time there would entail. As you see them today, they are still wide-eyed <laughs> and maybe even still a little uncertain about what the future holds for them as Salvation Army officers. However, what I can absolutely affirm is their dedication to the mission of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and meeting human needs in His name without discrimination. After 2,377 hours of classroom and field training, they have engaged in their training program as the staff of the college have faithfully come alongside of them and aimed to develop them as officers. Of such blood and fire spirit that they will faithfully sustain and advance the purpose of God's Salvation Army in the USA Southern Territory. They are a session that loves God, and they love people. They have been praying for those to whom they are being sent. In just a few short days, they have sought the face of God. They have determined that they would indeed be on the Lord's side. Commissioners, Major Elizabeth and I, along with the 18 staff officers, as well as those who served on the college staff last year during their first year of training. We can affirm that these cadets have been trained to be men and women of God's Word and will do their very best to represent the Savior to men and women in their communities. 
They are ready to lead soldiers into the victory of the risen Christ. They are all in and anticipate the faithfulness of God to strengthen them for the fulfillment of their irrevocable calling. They are aware of the weight of their session name, the reflectors of holiness, and have dedicated themselves not only to represent, but to also invite others into the life of God's holiness. And finally, just seven days ago, they signed their officer's covenant. And today, they are ready to begin their first day as lieutenants of the Salvation Army. Again, I present to you the reflectors of holiness. Are you ready for this? I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Let's go over it again. Okay. My covenant, called by God. That's what our covenant starts with. Called by God to proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As an officer of the Salvation Army. What a privilege. I bind myself to him in this solemn covenant. Bind? Yes, bind, to fasten tightly. Right. I bind myself to him. Thus, the covenant. I bind myself to him to love and serve him supremely all my days. To live to win souls and make their salvation the first purpose of my life. Wow. To feed the poor, feed the hungry, care for the poor, and clothe the naked. To love the unloved and befriend those who have no friends. To maintain the doctrines and principles of the Salvation Army. And by God's grace, prove myself a worthy officer. Are you ready for this now? I'm ready. <laughs> Done in the strength of my Lord and Savior, and in the presence of my leaders. And my comrade Salvationist, this is my covenant. This is my covenant. This
lost their purity and happiness. And at the time of the test of their fall, all men have become sinners, totally depraved, and as such are justly exposed to the wrath of God. We believe that the Lord Jesus Christ has by his suffering and death made an atonement for the whole world, so that whosoever will may be saved. We believe that repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, and regeneration by the Holy Spirit are necessary to salvation. We believe that we are justified by grace through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, and that he that believeth hath a witness in himself. We believe that continuance in the state of salvation depends upon continued obedient faith in Christ. We believe that it is the privilege of all believers to be wholly sanctified, and that their whole spirit and soul and body may be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in the immortality of the soul, in the resurrection of the body, in the general judgment at the end of the world, in the eternal happiness of the righteous, and in the endless punishment of the wicked. To faithfully maintain and proclaim these truths. We do. Do you regard it as your duty to bear witness to the world, to strive to lead mankind to its only Savior, and, for Christ's sake, to care for the poor, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, love the unloved, and befriend those who have no friends? We do. Do you promise, by Christian example, holy living, boundless charity, and adherence to the principles and disciplines of our movement, to show yourselves faithful officers of the Salvation Army? We do. In accepting these pledges which you have made today, you are ready for commissioning and ordination. Cadets Corey and Mandy Doggett. Cadet Corey Doggett. I rejoice that God has called, equipped, and gifted you for sacred service, and therefore I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. From 2 Samuel, you are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against the troop. 
You know, with my God, I can scale a wall. Cadet Mandy Doggett, recognizing that God has called you, equipped you, and gifted you for sacred service, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. Psalm 16, I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Cadet Jamie Dupree. Cadet Jamie Dupree, with gratitude to God for your calling into the paths of sacred service and for his empowering and gifting in your life, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. From Psalm 73. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory. Whom have I, who, who have I haven't heard about from you, O God? The earth has nothing that desires anything besides you. My flesh and my heart may fall, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Cadet Micah Gallagher. Cadet Micah Gallagher, I rejoice that God has called, equipped, and gifted you for sacred service. And therefore, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. Proverbs 3, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Cadet Jacobs Gillum. Cadet Jacobs Gillum. With gratitude to God for your calling into the paths of sacred service and for his empowering and gifting in your life, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer in the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. Joshua chapter 23. And you will know with all your heart and soul 
that not one of the good promises the Lord your God gave you has failed. Every promise has been fulfilled and not one has failed. Cadets Kay Lynn and Timothy Green. Cadets Kay Lynn Green. Recognizing that God has called you, equipped you, and gifted you for sacred service, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. Psalm 86, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Cadet Timothy Green. I rejoice that God has called, equipped, and gifted you for sacred service, and therefore I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant in 2 Samuel chapter 22. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. For who is God beside the Lord? And who is the rock except for God? Cadet Jennifer Hess. Cadet Jennifer Hess, with gratitude to God for your calling and to the paths of sacred service and for his empowering and gifting in your life, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. 2 Corinthians 12. For Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Cadets Douglas and Sharon Ingold. Cadet Douglas Ingold, recognizing that God has called you, equipped you, and gifted you for his sacred service. I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. From 1 Kings chapter 2. Be strong, 
Show yourself a man and observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in his ways and keep his decrees and commands, his laws and requirements as written in the law of Moses, so that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you may go. Cadet Sharon Anglin Ingold, with gratitude to God for your calling into the paths of sacred service and for his empowering and gifting in your life, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. Exodus 9. But I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Cadets Amanda and Daniel Jones. Cadet Amanda Jones, I rejoice that God has called, equipped, and gifted you for sacred service, and therefore I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and now commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. And from Psalm chapter 16, you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures as your right hand. Cadet Daniel Jones, with gratitude to God for your calling into the paths of sacred service and for his empowering and gifting in your life, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. From 1 Samuel 12, be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with your, all your heart. Consider what great things he has done for you. Cadets Osang oh Kwan and Yuni Li. Cadet Osang oh Kwan, recognizing that God has called you, equipped you, and gifted you for sacred service. I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. From Zephaniah chapter 3. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you, and he will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Cadet Uni Lee, with gratitude to God for your calling into the paths of sacred service and for his empowering and gifting in your life, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you 
as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. Psalm 25, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Cadets Candace and John Lawrence. Cadet Candace Lawrence, I rejoice that God has called, equipped, and gifted you for sacred service. And therefore, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now you are commissioned as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. And from Romans chapter 15. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures, and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Cadet John Lawrence, with gratitude to God for your calling into the paths of sacred service and for his empowering and gifting in your life, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. Philippians 3, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Cadets Aaliyah and Christopher Rawls. Cadet Aaliyah Rawls, I rejoice that God has called you He's equipped you and gifted you for sacred service, and therefore I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and now commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. And from Psalm 18, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Cadet Christopher Rawls, recognizing that God has called you, equipped you, and gifted you for sacred service, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. John 15, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit.
Cadets Isaiah and Rachel Rector. Cadet Isaiah Rector. With gratitude to God for your calling into the path of sacred service and for his empowering and gifting in your life, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. From Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Cadet Rachel Rector, I rejoice that God has called, equipped, and gifted you for sacred service. And therefore, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. Isaiah 30, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you say, this is the way, walk in it. Cadets Jenea and Kareem Shueb the second. Cadet Jenea Shueb, recognizing that God has called you equipped you, and gifted you for sacred service, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. From 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Cadet Kareem Shweb II, I rejoice that God has called, equipped, and gifted you for sacred service. And therefore, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. Jeremiah 33. Call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Cadets Luke and Tanya Swain. Cadet Luke Swain, with gratitude to God for your calling into the pathways of sacred service. And for his empowering and gifting in your life, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army 
with the rank of lieutenant. And from Ezekiel chapter 40, Son of man, look with your eyes and hear with your ears and pay attention to everything I am going to show you. For that is why you have been brought here. Cadet Tanya Swain, recognizing that God has called you, equipped you, and gifted you for sacred service, I now ordain you as a minister of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and commission you as an officer of the Salvation Army with the rank of lieutenant. Psalm 121, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray a prayer of dedication over our new lieutenants? Heavenly Father, Holy One, we bow before you today in wonder that you can take us out of our messy, everyday lives and see something of value in us. And then you call us to do your work, to preach your gospel, to meet the needs of others. And you say, you can do it. You promise us in your word that you're going to go with us. And so we count on that. Father, I pray that each of these your people, these lieutenants, that they would know that when they walk out these doors, you go with them, you go before them, you go behind them. Father, you have blessed them with an incredible time as cadets. And those days are great. And we thank you for those. But Lord, they're officers. And we need strong officers who love you with their whole heart, who want to serve you and win the world for Jesus. And so, Lord, I pray today that you'll pour your spirit out upon them, that they will walk in confidence, not in themselves, but in you, that they will stand on your word, that they will look deep into your word and hide it in their heart, so that on those days when it's difficult, it's not their own feelings that they're looking to, but it's your word and your promises. Lord, today we build an Ebenezer in this place, and we say, thus far God has helped us. But we're not going to stay here. We're going to go into the world, and we're going to take your love, we're going to take your peace, your joy, your goodness, and we're going to share it to everyone you give us the opportunity to do so. Bless your people. Bless their children. Wrap your shield of protection around them. We ask, Lord, that you would prepare schools, friends, people who will love them, who will surround them, who will speak truth and love over their lives. We pray for those children who have stepped into adulthood that you will draw them close to you and that you will remind them of the fact that their parents love and care about them and want them to be safe and happy. But most of all, they want them to be connected in deep relationship with you. And now, Lord, we just pray your seal upon these, your people. Remind them of their covenant, which they placed before you yet again today, daily. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to 
remind you that the lifelong process of holiness begins at a state of purity. While you have come to the EBC to learn to be teachers, you've also come to be polished spiritually so that you can reflect Christ himself to the world. Three quick things as you seek to reflect holiness in our world. Number one, do not consider your years at the training school as a prelude to ministry. This is not what you do before ministry starts. This is your ministry right now. Number two, do not believe that you'll be more faithful in ministry in the future than you are now. The habits and practices you establish now in training school will foretell the habits and practices of your future ministry. Be faithful in every assignment. And lastly, do not believe that you'll love the Army's mission more in the future than you do now. Love the mission of the Salvation Army both now and into the future. Be infatuated with the bride of Christ and saving souls. Prepare yourselves to be leaders in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and to meet human needs in his name without discrimination. So reflectors of holiness, we're grateful for your commitment to serve and to accomplish the kingdom of God through the Salvation Army and through Salvation Army officership. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me All his wonderful passion and purity Oh, Spirit divine, all my nature refined To the beauty of Jesus be seen in me Till the beauty of Jesus be seen If you've been with us this weekend, we've been reminded of the, this territory's relationship with the children's home in Mexico, and this morning's offering will be used to support the work of the children's homes in Mexico. I invite the ushers if they'll come forward. You'll also notice on the QR screen, on the, on the screen a QR code. I invite you, pull out your phones. Those of you at home can participate as well in, in the offering to support the children's homes this morning. Lord, you are truly wonderful. We thank you for your blessings and pray that you will take this offering, bless it, and multiply it, and use it for your kingdom. In your name we pray, amen. Lost in shame, could not get past my brain till he called my name. I'm so glad he changed me. Darkness held me down, but Jesus pulled me out. And see, I'm no longer found. I'm so glad he changed me. See, I'm now a new creation in Christ. The old has gone, there's no life.
And now, it's a moment when we have an opportunity to remember and rejoice in all that God is doing in our territory. Today, we celebrate 97 years the Southern Territory has commissioned officers. In remembering today, 40 of those sessions are represented by the parading of their flags.
you may be seated. It's my privilege this morning to introduce you to the session speaker. Her name is Lieutenant Mandy Doggett. <laughs> Lieutenant Doggett is married to Lieutenant Corey Doggett. And together they have three beautiful children, Lacey, Maddie, and Hank. Mandy and her family arrived at the Evangeline Booth College from Arkansas and Oklahoma Division. And they will be returning to the division as Corps officers of the Norman, Oklahoma Corps. Mandy's joy, like many of her session mates, is infectious and her ability to capture people's hearts and minds when she shares the gospel is a testimony to the working of the Holy Spirit in her life. When asked what she is most looking forward to as a Corps officer, Mandy said, I am most looking forward to seeing the power of God transform lives, set people free, and restore hope. God bless you, Mandy, as you come and share with us your speak this morning. Thank you, Colonel Sedler. I appreciate that. And first of all, we as a session want to thank all of you for being here to celebrate with us this holy and pivotal day. Many of you have prayed us through to this exact moment, supporting and encouraging us, believing in God's call and ability to sustain us when we ourselves doubted. Don't stop now, though. We will continue to need the prayer and support and reminders in order to carry out this call in the days ahead. I am so thankful we don't go alone. Rather, with an army of leaders, mentors, and fellow soldiers, we love and appreciate you. Reflectors of holiness, congratulations. By the grace and power of God, you did it. And as I stand here looking at you today, there is only one word that comes to mind, and that is raise. For those of you utterly confused right now, that was just a little flashback to our spring missions trip. If you haven't heard already, we had an amazing time in Belize. I would even venture to say life-changing. And now we are about to embark on another life-changing event. As we've gotten closer to this day, I've heard many of us, myself included, beg the same question of any and every officer we manage to corner. What is the one thing we need to know? What is the most important thing about being an officer? It's like we're all maybe just a little fearful that we may have missed that one element that is going to make this whole thing work. Maybe that information was given during the class when we were sick. Or the one where we blinked just a little too long and woke up during a different class entirely. <laughs> or perhaps it was said during the lecture when we were frantically writing that paper that we'd realized was due the night before. Whatever the reason, we're afraid we may have missed some critical piece of knowledge that will make or break our ministry. If this is you today, take a deep breath. You see, I've got the inside scoop and I'm here to share it with you today. All we have to do is look to a very, very wise man who's taught us so much of what we already know about ministry. And while you might think this, I'm actually not talking about Major McWilliams this time, but rather Jesus himself. So if we look back to the beginning of Jesus' ministry in Luke chapter 4, we discover him heavily immersed in the daily bombardment of ministerial demands. He is already facing both fame and rejection, adoration and hostility, and there's just not enough of him to go around. Everyone wants a piece of his time, some to hurl questions and accusations at him, and others in expectation of receiving something from him. Officers in the room, does this sound familiar? Yeah, I was afraid you might say that. Reflectors of holiness, let's see how Jesus handles this same situation it sounds like you and I will find ourselves in very soon. The scriptures say, at daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. 
But he said, I must proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns also, because that is why I was sent. So first we find Jesus in a solitary place. We know from later passages that he was using this time to meet with his father in prayer. We also see the demands of people trying to crowd in and consume more of his time than his mission allowed. But oh, how I love his response to these pressures. He says, I must proclaim the good news, for that is why I was sent. That's it. That's the one critical piece of information we must not forget. Well, really it's two, but you know, what do I know about numbers? I'm just your session treasurer. You see, all the people had, the, you see, Jesus had people all around him with legitimate needs and concerns, demanding his attention, but he refused to compromise two things. One, time alone with his father, and two, the furtherance of the gospel. Isn't it wild to think that because of his unwillingness to compromise on these two aspects of his life, people were actually disappointed with Jesus? I mean, this is the Son of God that we are talking about. As a human, though, he could not be in all places at the same time, and he only had so much of himself to give. But to these two things, he remained faithful, an intimate connection with God and spreading the good news. Now, we have to stop here and ask ourselves, though, what is this good news that Jesus was so determined to spread? Well, we find our answer in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, when Jesus claims Isaiah's prophecy, saying, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So what was his message? It was one of freedom. Freedom from the slavery and oppression of sin. Eyes once blind, now open to see the goodness and holiness of God. And a restoration of the favor and love of God. Man, what a good news that is. And it is available for every man, woman, boy, and girl. If you are here today and you don't know of this offer of salvation, of the forgiveness of sins, you are in the right place. Simply look to your left or to your right or to any man or woman up on this stage. We would love the chance to tell you about the good news that has changed our lives and can change yours also. This is exactly what Jesus invites us to do in the next chapter of Luke, to join him in sharing his offer of forgiveness with the world. Chapter 5, verses 10 and 11 says, Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled up their boats on shore, left everything, and followed him. I feel like if Jesus were here today, this is exactly what he would say to the people sitting here before me, who have also left everything to follow him. Do not be afraid, reflectors of holiness. From now on, you will fish for people. Friends, as we pick up the net to follow in the footsteps of Jesus and the pattern of ministry that he has set before us, we must be careful to prioritize what Jesus himself refused to neglect. To some degree, nothing else matters without these two things. One, the gospel of repentance and forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ for all people. And two, a close and personal relationship with the God who offers that grace. Reflectors of holiness, I believe God is going to use you to do mighty things for his kingdom. My prayer, though, for us is that in the midst of all that wonderful doing, that we never neglect time spent simply being with our Father in heaven and the essential simplicity of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. For just as Jesus said of himself, we must proclaim the good news, for that is why we are being sent. Lieutenant Doggett, that sounds good, doesn't it? Thank you. 
Thank you for representing your beautiful session. Thank you for sharing your heart. Lieutenants are the best. New lieutenants are the best. Uh, well, all of you are the best. But, but there's just something special, right? Yeah. Well, we're going to share a blessing over you. And Jeremy and I stand here to bless you, to bless the name of Jesus. And then Jeremy's going to bless the congregation in our beautiful territory as well, as long, uh, along with those who are watching online. Please receive this blessing. Officers of the Reflectors of Holiness Session, I bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, you take up the mantle of spiritual leadership as an officer of the Salvation Army. And while your ordination and commissioning has been individual, you do not enter the battlefield alone. You will join a company of commissioned officers, local officers, and soldiers who welcome you and who will work side by side with you in the great salvation war. Now, officers of the Reflectors of Holiness session, I stand on behalf of the soldiers of the USA Southern Territory to say that we acknowledge and affirm your commission to ministry. We invite you to lead us in advancing the Army's mission to a world in need of salvation. Guide us in our worship. Deepen our knowledge of the word and encourage us in the battle. Comfort us in our sufferings. Celebrate with us in our joys. Hold us accountable to promises of our soldiers' covenants and fan within us the flame of a genuine passion for souls. Help us to keep our eyes ever focused on Jesus as we live our lives in dedication to his service. In our congregation, soldiers, officers, family members, I'm gonna invite you to stand. I'm gonna ask that we read this pledge together as we read to our new lieutenants. We pledge, pledge our, our support, support for you, you and commit to, to work together in shared ministry and service. We commit to pray that God would strengthen your spirit in order that you do not grow weary in the fulfilling of your calling. Now, new officers, I'm going to invite you to stand. And we, as the body of Christ, let's read this promise together. Together, we will, we will advance, advance the kingdom, kingdom of God through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and the transforming fire of the Holy Spirit. We will unite in mission and purpose, working with God to seek and find the lost, the hurting, and the hopeless, and bring them to Jesus. We commit to grow together in the grace and knowledge of our Savior, intent upon becoming strong, mature, and effective in our faith. And being so equipped, we pledge to remain true to our holy calling, the salvation of souls. May it be true, and God bless. You may be seated.
Thank you. They give me all this space to work with up here. You know, when I first saw you today, I thought these people were in the sun for a long time yesterday. I mean, they're red faces. It's, it's, it's glowing, really. And then I realized, no, it's, it's a Shekinah glory of the Lord in your faces because haven't we been with God all weekend it's just been so rich to be in his presence and for the Yuris thank you for your ministry to us all weekend Uh, I looked out yesterday and I saw Bill sitting there in the sun well both Diane as well faces glowing and it was from the sun thank you for being all in and we appreciate your ministry. And yesterday was a, was a great day, wasn't it? I had a lot of fun. Did he confess, who here rode the train? I rode the train. Now it was for my granddaughter. Yeah. <laughs> and then today to see this. To see the hand of God on the people of God anointed for his service just like that they're new lieutenants I'm not sure they would agree (laughs) it's interesting isn't it how sometimes the moments and hours drag but years go oh so fast and for those of you with children grandchildren loved ones here I want to thank you for your years of nurturing, watering, gardening their hearts. And if you're here this weekend and new to the Salvation Army, I will agree with you. They are a strange group of people. (laughs) They clap for odd reasons, like nobody cues them. They just start up. (laughs) No! (laughs) No! That was not a hint for a cheap. (laughs) I was speaking of their song, right? When we break out into this applause and and sing with with God our voices and our hands. The tambourines that God has given most all of us. I'm a new generation salvationist, first generation. I didn't know anything about the Salvation Army except they're strange and weird, and all that is still true. And I'm happy to throw my lot in with them or to cast my lot in with them. The thing that drew me first to the Salvation Army was their love for Jesus and their joy that just spilt over the top. Quickly recognizing that these people really are all in. I grew up in a Methodist church for a minute, then a Baptist church. So I've been dunked and freeze-dried and everything else you can imagine. (laughs) But it's the joy of the people, the Salvationists, that caught my attention. And the little blonde sitting to your left. (laughs) Attractional evangelism. (laughs) 
Yesterday we learned about digital discipleship, but I've got other ways that we'll talk about. And some of you are guilty as well. Well, listen, it's all for Jesus, amen? Whether it's new lieutenants, a merry-go-round, a pizza party, anything that we can do to attract people to the name and to the person of Jesus, well, that's what we'll do. Stand on our heads and learn to play an instrument, right? I do want to just express my appreciation to the staff songsters and band and the praise band. It's just, you've just ushered us into the very presence of God. And uh, we acknowledge and appreciate your sacrifice and love language at the same time. It's a beautiful day to be in the Salvation Army. I'm happy about the Salvation Army. I'm excited about where the Salvation Army is. Right? There's so much in front of us. I love the rearview mirror, but someone adequately said the other day that the rearview mirror is small for a reason. It's the windshield that we should be paying attention to. And I'm excited about the future of our Salvation Army. Well, well, I want to hold your attention for just a moment. And I want to do it by turning our eyes toward Jesus and in particular his word. Are you with me? This is a high and holy day. This is the springtime of the Salvation Army. This might be as good as it gets. The band, the songsters. But I believe the, the best that we are is from El Paso to Miami and from Baltimore to Paducah. That's my Salvation Army. That's where I cut my teeth on the scriptures. And I was engaged and formed by local officers who I didn't know the church words. I didn't have that vocabulary yet. But they were graceful and loving and caring and compassionate and looked over and still look over all my deficiencies. But God is so good. All, all for Jesus. I know that you're all in. And I want to thank you for that. But I don't want to leave you just there. So if you have your Bibles, there are scripture points that I will refer to along the journey and the first one is going to be in Ephesians chapter 5 Ephesians chapter 5 reflectors of holiness it doesn't just sit on the single star of the new lieutenants we are a holiness movement this weekend we've been we've given attention to evangelism and discipleship and those things are uniquely connected, but I would suggest to you that holiness is the trifecta of those three. That if we somehow aren't living out holy lives, it sure makes me a stumbling block for evangelism and discipleship. To be like Jesus, we sing it, this hope possesses me. Every thought and deed, you know that chorus. We might sing it later. Prepare yourself. To reflect holiness is really scorched into the tenets of our beliefs. It's our DNA as salvationists. And we want to think a little deeper about that this morning. You know the doctrine. We believe that it's a privilege of all believers to be holy sanctified. And I appreciate those amazing words, again, by the Uries on Friday evening. I had to change my entire sermon. Excuse me while I wipe my glasses off. This is why they make tunics like this. You saw Booth do it, right? To reflect holiness, the, to, the word reflection isn't always so easily found in your Bibles. Even in the message, even in the KIV, the Kelly Agahart version, it doesn't exist there very well. So you have to find words that are akin or like to it. And the word that, to me, most closely 
reflects is to imitate throughout the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. New King James Version says, Be imitators of God as dear children. Now, in Africa, they would always say amen if they believed what was just said. If they didn't believe it, it was quiet. But if they believed it, it was followed closely by an amen. Like you barely finished the full stop and got to the amen. I just cue you for that one. Apparently you're excited to clap, but you're not excited about amening. You're with me. <laughs> Thank you. I always love it when the house are on the front row. Because they're always smiling. They're always there going, at a boy. We love the two of you. Just want you to know we're glad you're here. We love you so much. And some of these good people are here under your ministry, and we just acknowledge that as well. The message version of Ephesians chapter 5 really kind of brings it home for me. Watch what God does, and then what? <laughs> you do it. That's pretty, that's pretty deep, isn't it? I mean, that's kind of almost beyond my ability to understand. Watch what God does, and then you do it like children who learn from their parents. I'll just let that soak in. It's pretty clear. You don't need a Greek translation. <laughs> Woe is me when I wasn't always the best model for my children. I'm afraid sometimes of what they saw or what they heard. So I wanted to show them and point them always back to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Watch what God does. First, of these, at first Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.6, you become imitators of us and of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, follow my example, says Paul, as I follow the example of Christ. Be imitators, reflect. Did you see the moon last night? It was huge. Now, you know the moon has no source. It has one job. It does it quite well, particularly last night. It simply reflects the sun. God, in his handiwork, demonstrates who we are. Reflectors of holiness. You've heard this for two years. You've got sermons ready, I suspect. And I want to hear them. Most importantly, I want to see them. I'm interested in what you have to say, but I'm very interested in what you do. And when they don't match up, I pray that my people have blinded eyes and ears that are stopped up. You'd understand when it speaks about being imitators, it's a verb. It's also present tense. It's ongoing. It hasn't stopped. This wasn't written uh, more, almost 2,000 years ago, and now we're finished with it. It's like a one and done. You're always imitating. You're always reflecting. You're never quite finished. It's a characteristic like that of a child. It mimics. Reflecting is also mimicking who Jesus is. Now, some of you behind me have probably mimicked your training principle for two years. And I'm sure it's only been good. Right? Sure, it's only been good. You've never made fun of these voices. or and, and Tom and Julie, you're sitting here. You, you know that they only spoke good things about you all. I mean, what else could they say? And, you know, when they get commissioned, like they have today, they mimic their divisional leaders. You watch them. This is how it looks. They'll look at your shoes. The next thing you know, they'll have a pair of shoes just like Dad's. All shiny like Kent Davis's shoes. And they'll try to sing like Fiona and preach like Al. Because you see, that's who they mimic sometimes. Now they love Jesus. But they're looking at the leader in front of them. And I wonder what they see when they look at you. I worry sometimes what you see when you look at me. I just want to look like Jesus, amen? amen. I just want to look like Jesus. 
you know what, our world and our neighbors and our families, they need to see the reflection of Jesus in our hearts and in our everyday walking around life. And when they can't see Jesus, they at least need to touch him. They need to hear him. They need to feel his hugs, his handshakes. The church's chief task is to make Christianity visible, intelligible, and desirable. If you need something to take home, take a picture of that. Christianity must be visible. It must be intelligible. I need to understand it. And man, salvationists do a pretty good job at making it desirable. Because we can't help but to love people. We demonstrate that love. At least I pray that we do. To reflect holiness, we look to Jesus and the Word of God. And there's a few hard things that Jesus did that I think we're going to have to uh, embrace. And one of the first ones I want you to pay attention to is what Jesus said and what was said about him in denying yourself. You have to deny yourself. That's not what the world says. The world says I'm number one. The world says you go first. The world says you get whatever degree you want to do. The world says you, you, you deserve. What's the world say? To everybody gets a trophy. Right? The Bible says you deny yourself. In fact, I want you to pay attention to this. The Word of God says he made himself of no reputation. And he took on the very nature of a servant. See, the world doesn't understand that. They can't comprehend that. The Bible says that he emptied himself. It's not about Jesus. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's all about him. The Bible says he did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life. That's counterculture. If you're not counterculture, we are in our DNA counterculture. Look at your uniform. <laughs> Nobody wants a uniform. Even the kids going to school, they don't want to wear the uniform. I think you look really nice in that uniform. <laughs> Was that one of my grandkids up there? <laughs> there should be in the children's meeting. <laughs> you're by nature counterculture. I think I saw... Lieutenant Colonel Satterley up there with the timbrel a while ago. Is that what I saw? You know, that's strange. <laughs> and you're a big part of our family. And we love you. We should be a, you, you should be different than the world. If we're blending in, you better check yourself. If you're not causing disruption... Better check yourself. I like a little bit of a rowdy Salvation Army. I'm not interested. If I want to go to a high church, there's one down the street. Yeah. That's not what we signed up for. See, the world has to see something different in you and me. If I blend in, if I'm a camouflaged Christian, I will not be seen. And when I'm not seen, Jesus isn't seen. Because they don't know him. They don't hear his voice. Not yet. And so that's our responsibility. But my friends, you have to deny yourself. He humbled himself to become obedient to death. Even death, what? To the cross. The worst. The most humiliation. The most embarrassing. Saved for the worst of the worst. But yet predestined by the best of the best. And because of that death and resurrection, we have life. Amen? I had to pull it out of you right there. I think the hardest prayer ever prayed, Jesus prayed in the garden, not my will but yours be done. 
Not my will, but yours be done. That's a hard prayer. Every single one of these behind me have prayed that prayer. It wasn't always easy. Some here gave up careers for a calling. Some had to lower the, their humanness and took on holiness. You are not the person you once were. Praise God. And not yet the person God fully wants you to be. It's instantaneous, but it's also a progression. Stay in the word of God. It's more than a compass. It's the true north. It's the star. It's your guiding light. It's the difference maker. You'll be tempted, and I'm sure the training college has sorted this out, when you're busy on Saturday night to download your sermon for Sunday. Now, I know none of you. Stay in the word, constant. I'm going to give away a trade secret. You ready? My Bible stays on my desk, open. And I do my devotions every day at my desk. I don't know where your chair is, but you must find it. So that everything that comes through that my mouth and gets typed into that computer is filtered through the Word of God. That's my prayer. I'm concerned I sometimes don't always do it. But my prayer is that. So just leave it open. Not for other people to see, but for you to know. We're people of the Word of God. So I'm, I'm afraid you're going to have to deny yourself. Then Jesus said this to his disciples. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will what? Lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. Anybody here found true life? Mm hmm Yeah. I saw some of you. I was sneaking around yesterday. True fact. I may have had a mouthful of pizza, but I was watching you. <laughs> and some of you couldn't help yourself. Somehow we could figure out who's in our club and who's not. We figured that out yesterday. And I watched you because there were people who you probably believe were from the neighborhood. But maybe you were thinking they weren't churched. And so you approached them. I saw you. And you started practicing some of that evangelism, some of that love of Jesus. And I just want to thank you for that. I don't know what the number was. Somebody before I left last night thought there was almost 500 people who came onto the property who weren't here before, who weren't registered. 500 souls for Jesus. They didn't know they were trapped. <laughs> You're sneaky people. Put out the nice piece of cake, the hot dogs, the coffee, and you welcomed them, and you loved them, and you invited them. I want to thank you for that. You denied yourself. <laughs> Apparently, I did, and I was on the train having a great time, <laughs> and you guys were doing the job of an evangelist, and I just want to thank you for that. I want to move on. Because I want to reflect Jesus. And one of the things we find out about Jesus is this idea of walking in the light. Walking in the light. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Not a reflector like me. Not an imitator like me. He is the source. He is the light of the world. He's not a copy. He's an original. And then he goes on to say, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Amen? Amen. 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 I follow Jesus, and I have this light. And I know that you do too, because I see it in your faces. I hear it in your voices. I hear you play it. But I'm telling you, you're a strange lot, because walking in the light is not so popular today. 
Not very popular. The Bible goes on to say, anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or a sister still walks in darkness. You ever check yourself? You ever notice like when something's kind of easing up or oozing up, it's not a, not a good thought about a neighbor? Like, I can't believe they did that. This person disappointed me. You, this root of bitterness comes up. You need to check yourself just to make sure you're still walking in the light. I have to do it all the time. So let's watch out and care for one another. Jesus goes on to say this. First John, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, amen, we will have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. I see a holy people here whose heart, whose intent is to love and please Jesus. I don't know if you consider yourself perfect because other people may not, but I do. And I believe that Jesus might. Now, I'm going to tell one quick secret. She might be in here, so it could be. It's one of those embarrassing moments when you embarrass your kids. They find themselves in the sermon they didn't plan to. Kelsey's probably here. But she gave me a birthday card. Maybe I've told you this one. And uh, she was little. We couldn't afford Hallmark cards. And the Salvation Army truck hadn't picked up the Hallmark stuff yet. So she had to actually make one. You remember Hallmark? She made this beautiful one. For whatever reason, put a red cardinal on it. She knows I'm not a cardinal fan. She knows I'm a wildcat fan. Amen. There's still hope. She drew this beautiful card and wrote this beautiful message that says, Happy Birthday, Dad. And I open it up, and like most dads, right, you kind of tear up for that moment, and you know how special it is, and you realize the word birthday is not spelled properly. But to me, it was perfect, right? Isn't that how God sees us? Oh, I'm very much aware of my imperfections. And if I ever forget, sometimes people will remind me. Isn't that nice? They're so kind. <laughs> Katie, you might be one of them, right? But God reminds me that I am perfect in him. When my heart and my intent is simply to love Jesus and be all in, I thank God for his love and gentle con uh, control for me. I don't know if you saw this quote recently by Franklin Graham. We, we used to quote Billy Graham. And uh, I don't often quote Franklin Graham, but he said something the other day that caught my attention. And I suspect maybe you saw it too because it kind of woke me up. Franklin Graham recently said, I believe there's a coming storm. This is a warning. He says, I believe there is a coming storm that we're all going to have to be ready for. And it's not going to be good. The world is deteriorating so quickly that it seems that every demon in hell has been turned loose. Yeah, it set me back. And some days I feel like that. I don't know about you. I mean, I get so tired of re reading the news. At some point, I just got to turn it off. And I get tired of the politicians. To be quite frank, none of them are probably right. But it just makes me be reminded more and more. It's not up to the politicians. It's not up to the next general of the Salvation Army. It's up to me to walk in the light. All right? It's up to us. It's a personal relationship with Jesus. Let the rest of them work it out. Franklin Graham. To walk in the light of God is to demonstrate God's love for all people. For all people. Those that vote differently than you. Those who are at the pool hall on Sunday morning instead of your core. Those young children who seem to be confused on even their identity. Christ died for us all. Let's love them all. Let's love them all. Now, another hard thing. Sorry, this is not necessarily this. I don't know how you feel about it, but this is the scriptures. 
Jesus in Matthew chapter 7. Now, you know, he's continuing the Sermon on the Mount from chapter 5. He says this in verse 13 of chapter 7. Enter the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And what's it say? Only few find it. That's a sobering scripture. I don't like that one. I really wish that somehow could have been just inked out, uh, white out, deleted. But yet it's here. And as believers, we have to understand. And sometimes if you get concerned about the future of the church in America, you should be. If you're concerned about the future of the Salvation Army, I don't, you should sleep at night, but you should be a little concerned. But the reality is Jesus himself said narrow is the way. And there's few. But just because there's few... I want to encourage you, if you're on that pathway, and I pray you are, and if you're not, you're going to get an opportunity in just a minute. But when you're on that pathway and you're walking that narrow way, you got two arms, and on each side I'm going to grab as many people as I can. It's called evangelism, and it's called loving Jesus so much that no one should be, no one should perish. But it's the day and time that we live in. Don't be, don't be crushed sleep well God is still on the throne Jesus is still on the right his work is finished the Holy Spirit has much yet to do and he wants to use us to do that and I believe that he is what did we say we started with denying yourself we continued with you need to be walking in the light and we're now starting to complete the message by traveling the narrow way. I want to say something about the high council. That's like that caught you off guard. I know it did. This is that rabbit trail in the middle of a sermon that every preacher has that does. It's they teach it at the training college, I'm sure. Because some of you have now wandered away and you're thinking about what you're having for lunch. So this is that moment for you to come back to the meeting and join us here. Some people have asked us about the high council, and there's much to say. I I would just simply say it was a high and holy place. It was beautiful. Privileged to be there. But one particular afternoon, the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, came to visit with us. Now, his name is Justin Welby, and if if you're not familiar with him, you probably may have seen him preach the funeral of Queen Elizabeth recently. And even more recently, uh, he, was, he did the coronation for the new king. So, I mean, the guy's kind of, you know, there's me, and then there's the archbishop. <laughs> the general somewhere up there. But he came and he just spoke to us. He's fascinating. That gentleman loved Jesus with all of his heart. And he was telling us about some things that I thought maybe would be interesting for you to hear. One of the questions in the interview was probably a question that many of you have asked. Was what's the church, how's the church engaged the LGBTQ plus community? How do we, what's our concern about marriage? Who's marriage between? And, and it's interesting to ask other churches kind of how, how they're traveling that road with love and grace but yet somehow trying to discern exactly where they stand on these issues. And the archbishop had said something I thought was pretty profound, at least it was profound to me, but, and I'll share that with you in a minute. So this is the cliffhanger moment of the rabbit trail. The archbishop recognizes that the environment that we're in as a Christian church, has, lives, we live in tension with the world. And it's not easy to navigate. Now, one of the things I loved about the archbishop, and and you guys here would be fascinated for this one. He said when he was really applying 
uh, for a post or even to get into their training college. He was interviewed by what must have been the divisional commander or somebody significant in the Church of England. And the, and the good news and the bad news was this. <laughs> he says, this interviewer said, I've probably interviewed a thousand people. This man's the Archbishop of Canterbury. I've interviewed a thousand people. And he said, of the thousand people I've ever interviewed, you're the worst. <laughs> in fact, he went on to say, there is no hope for you in the church. You'll never amount to anything. I don't know if you ever heard those words. Somebody probably said them to me and I shut them out. But look where the man sits today. So when somebody says, you can't or you aren't, you said, but I am Jesus, right? And he's got my future in his hands. I sat up a little straighter in my chair when the man said that. He went on to say this, and when, when he said this, I heard Don was, I think, sitting on my left, and I'm pretty sure I heard, mm-hmm. When he said this, he said, behind every great man is a surprised woman. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, there's eight mans now. <laughs> and I don't think Donna even knows she said it. She goes, mm-hmm. I didn't have to look over you. Yeah, that's true. I'm sure she said that'll preach. And then... Without missing a beat, he says this thing that just puts a stake in my heart. I shared it with TEC this week. Then he said, sometimes in our business practices, we act like atheists. And that we have no faith. We act like atheists in our business practice. Where's our faith? Where's our faith? He was a beautiful man of God, but what the quote I want to get you to is how he responded to these modern-day issues that the churches around the world are trying to figure out. He said, the challenge today in the church is that we're fascinated with ourselves and not Christ. That's his answer to those questions. We're more concerned about our identity and other people's identity and other people's choices that we have for taken our eyes off Jesus. Let's just put our eyes back on Jesus and let the rest of it sort itself out. Right? Uh, we do love and we do care and we want everybody to see Jesus face to face. But let's focus on ourselves first. That splinter and that big log often get in my way. And I suspect they might for you as well. Narrow is the gate. Last thing. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. The Bible says that we are being transformed into Christ's likeness. Transformed. Reflect. Mimic. Be like Jesus. Romans 8, 29. For him he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the very image of the Son. Conformed. It's just, it's just molding. Starts in the heart. Somehow makes its way to the head. And then our bodies are transformed to the very image of Christ so that we reflect him in our daily lives. I sometimes worry that I don't reflect him very well. I'm positive of that. And I suspect in this audience and by those watching online, sometimes you, don't, you feel similar. Remember what the Bible says, take up your cross daily. Take it up daily, all in. To be transformed into the likeness of Christ is the work of the Holy Spirit. You can't muster this up on your own. That's his work. 
but we play a, an important part in our Christian life and our growth in him. Catherine Booth, someone said, and I, I think I agree, her ultimate question, beautiful question, perhaps you've heard it before. Catherine Booth, co-founder of the Salvation Army. How much like God can we be? How much like our God can we be? And if I might just say, personalize that and say, can I be? How much like God can I be? I want to ask that, myself that question every single day and every single moment. In that moment when I'm confused, in that moment when I can feel my blood pressure going up, in that moment when I disagree with what's being said, I need to sit back and I need to think, how much like Christ can I be? How would he respond to this situation? Go everywhere in the world, tell the good news. That's what Jesus says. That's, what, that's our ambition. That's our hope. That's our stay. I want to ask you this morning to, to, kinda, to close your eyes for just a moment. For some, I know that feels a little risky. And the purpose really is just to kind of try to tune in even a little closer to the Holy Spirit. To not to be confused or overstimulated. But just to take a personal moment with Christ. If you're in your living room or if you're in your car or wherever you may be in this world. I'd like to ask you to one to think about yourself. Your relationship with God. Ask yourself this question or these series of questions. Do I deny myself? Or do I always put myself in the front of the line? Am I more concerned about self than I am what Jesus and, and his will for my life is? You have to deny yourself. Ask yourself, am I walking in the light? Am I truly walking in the light of Jesus? Certainly I can't reflect holiness if I'm not walking in the light. And you're all invited to walk in his perfect light. Jesus reminded us that the, there is a very narrow way that makes us a little uncomfortable. And perhaps this morning as we gather here, you're uncertain as to whether you're on the narrow way or the wider highway. That the Bible reminds us it leads to destruction. We want to invite you today to be on that narrow way. Narrow simply means there's not very many people there. And it's not always easy. You can get tripped up on the narrow way. But Jesus is there with us all, all, all the way. He's the author of the narrow way. And he invites you to walk with him. And then we ended with this idea of a transformed life. The work of the Holy Spirit. That can be both instant, but yet can take a lifetime to fully develop, to look just like Jesus. The Archbishop said about us, about the Salvation Army, about Salvationists. He said, you are the very people who demonstrate that God is faithful to his purpose. Demonstrate is you're doers. You're active. You're in the fight. You're on the journey. You're not ready to just release people to the way that leads to death. But you want to invite them into the party of Jesus. We're going to sing a chorus in a moment. Really from Friday until this moment we're talking about being like Jesus reflecting Jesus reflecting holiness being like Jesus and we have this amazing song that helps us focus our attention to be like Jesus this hope possesses me possesses me like it's all I think about 
It's the beginning of my prayer and the conclusion. It's the bookend of my day. That I am possessed to be like Jesus. Is that passion still there? Or or sometimes do you forget? We are human after all. We could neglect that aspect. The beautiful course goes on to demonstrate every thought, every deed. It's my aim, my creed, my promise. It's what I live by. It's the standard of my life to be like Jesus. In a moment, we're going to sing that chorus. But just before we do, and with your eyes closed and your head bowed, I just want to ask a question. Am I truly all in? Am I truly all in? Am I guilty of of the hokey pokey? That when it's convenient, my right foot is in. But when it's hard, I back away. When it's not my will that's being worked out. Jesus loves you. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. I want to invite you to sing in a moment. But as you do, I want you to see this as a prayer. Is it your prayer to be like Jesus? Boy, I sure hope so. I encourage you to be. I I beg you as strongly as I can to be like Jesus. And if you need his help to be more like him, these altars are open. This is a sacred moment. And it may just be God the Holy Spirit is asking you to draw closer to me. And if that's true, I'd invite you, even as we get ready to sing, before we sing, just get up. If you're in the balcony, I see you. There's many different pathways to this beautiful altar. I want to invite you, even from the balcony, even right now, if God is speaking to you, His Holy Spirit, has your heart so tender and warm it's that sensation that he's here again he's pleading with you to come don't you get up in a moment Josh is going to lead us in this course but don't wait never wait come those who are here and closer Why don't you come to the altar? Those who are in a band. Somebody else is taking care of the music. You don't don't have to worry about the next hymn. Let God move in your life. Songsters, you sing Jesus. But maybe there's something in your heart, in your life, that he's saying, why don't you come just a little closer? I don't know what's happening in your life, how he's moving just now. That's between you and him. But I encourage you, I ask you, I beg you, if he's moving, you respond with sing, Josh. To be like Jesus is who possesses me. Come on, stop denying his presence. That burning in your heart, respond to it. To be just like him, to imitate him. This hope possesses me. Reflect. beautiful movement of the Spirit of God here. Maybe you need to take your hands away from your seat and just be free. Just be free here in these few moments. This moment's for you. 
Some of you traveled a long distance. Well, I don't want you to return back to the, on the van ride to normalcy. I want you to be changed. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be loved. This is a personal moment just for you. Josh, let's sing that chorus again. Let's sing it again. Thank you. To be like Jesus. right there his spirit helping me you can't work out all of these things on your own you need the word of God you need the work of the Holy Spirit in your life and he's he here it's free it's in abundance and he's tugging on your shirt he's whispering in your ear to come don't resist the work of the Holy Spirit today. Not today. Not today. Why don't you come? And maybe, maybe you're sitting next to someone that's really in a fight. I mean, they want to, but they're, they're just scared. They've never made that leap. Maybe there's people here today who don't know Jesus as, as your Lord and as your Savior. And you know that as a Christian sitting next to someone, or you have a family member who's come a long way and been a part of this beautiful experience over this weekend. I can't think of a better time than at a commissioning weekend. If you're a non-believer, you're not sure of where you are yet with Jesus. You don't even know uh, what to make of him. In faith, you can trust him to do what he said he'd do. In this place of prayer, it's just for you. We're going to sing the chorus again. And if you're that person who says, well, if they sing that chorus one more time, this is it. I invite you to move just now. Let's sing together. To be like Jesus. To be like Jesus. This whole You're a soldier of Jesus Christ. I want to invite you, if you would just pray. Would you just pray for those who are gathered here today? Maybe, maybe for those who are still wrestling. Um, yeah, would you just do that, brother? Father, there is a mighty moving of the Spirit this morning. We feel it. We've prayed for this for months. Know that you will have your way here this morning. It's so exciting for us to see these souls at the altar making decisions to follow you, recommitting their lives to be soldiers of your, your gospel in their communities. 
And there may be a couple that are still sitting in their seats waiting for the right time. And I pray that they would right now realize that this is the time. As you are calling them to make a decision to recommit their lives and to respond to the Spirit's leading. We thank you for your faithfulness here this morning, Lord, and the way that you are moving among us. Well, perhaps you've realized that there are little pods of people who gathered together. And many of these I recognize are families. So we want to transition just now for these new lieutenants and perhaps the cadets who remain at the college. If you have a family member here that you'd like to pray with, move out to, hold a hand, say a word of encouragement. Maybe you're a believer here today or a family member and you want to pray over your new lieutenant. It's a perfect time to do that. It's a perfect time to do that. As Josh get, uh, sings one more time or a couple more times this beautiful chorus, and maybe you're sitting here this morning and and you see this beautiful expression of Jesus and His Holy Spirit working, even from where you're seated. Why don't you just whisper that prayer? Maybe reach out an arm. Maybe you see someone here that you identify closely with, that you'd just like to join. Feel free to move. If you're more comfortable where you are, that's fine also. Let's sing that chorus one more time, Josh, as families and friends gather together. To be like Jesus, this hope possesses. There's a chorus that we sing in the army often that resonates with me and I suspect with you. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. It's not a transaction. You do this for me, I'll do that for you. See, Jesus has already done enough. He's given us all. There was no second option for the kingdom of God, for the Messiah. He came. He was all in. And he wants you to be all in for him today. This little chorus also says, I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. We're going to sing this little chorus, Josh, if you would. And perhaps let the God, the Holy Spirit, work through this, these words to speak to your heart today. All to Jesus, I surrender. If you're comfortable and you'd like to stand with me as we sing this chorus, I invite you to do so. All to Jesus. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to Him, I freely give. I
testimony today. Maybe as we sing that chorus, if that's your testimony, I surrender all. <laughs> Gladly, freely, happily, joyfully surrender all. Just raise your hand as we sing that chorus. And maybe, Josh, just take it up a little bit in speed. And let's make it a declaration as we sing, I surrender all. All to Jesus I surrender Humbly at His feet I bow Worldly pleasures all forsaken Take me, Jesus, take me Oh, we need to sing it one more time. This time with confidence. Is Captain Javon Hinton. I don't see her, but I know she's here. I can feel her presence. So, Javon, you need to come up and bail me out. Here she is. She's going to help me out here. But, uh, you know, when I see all of this activity and God moving in the lives of people, good people, people who love Jesus with all their heart, all I can say is all for Jesus, right? It's all for Him, it's all for His glory. Whether it's a merry go round, or someone's kneeling here for the first time knowing Jesus, it's all for him. God bless you. There are many of us here that have said, I surrender all. We surrender our lives to serve, to go out and to reach the lost, to do as Jesus commanded us to do before he ascended to heaven and he gave the message to his disciples, go, go everywhere into the world. Tell the good news to everyone. And we serve a God that is faithful, amen? God has not taken his hand off of us, amen? God is still working in our midst. He's still moving in our midst. And we know that God is still calling people in our midst to do the mission, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to meet human needs in his name without discrimination. God is calling, amen? Do you believe that? That God is still raising up people to be Salvation Army officers. Do you believe that? We, we step out in faith and we believe that God is able to do exactly what he said he would do. God is not taking his hand off of us. He's still calling people into service to go out and to reach the least of these. And I thank you for your prayers because I know people all over the territory have been praying for candidates. Retired officers, I'm grateful for you because I know that you have been on your knees praying and believing God for candidates. That's our prayer today. We're going to continue to seek. We're going to continue to pray, and we're going to continue to seek, and we're going to continue to pray because we serve a God that's faithful. And even if we don't see it, we believe that God is moving. Amen? And he's calling people. And, and the reflectors of holiness, they'll be leaving out the, the gates of the Evangelist Booth College in a few days. And uh, then we have the Defenders of Justice that have become second year. And then now we're preparing for the Champions of the Mission session. Next month, they'll be coming into Evangelist Booth College. And we have some Champions of the Mission that are here today. And I want to ask you to come. 
champions of the mission for the next session. I want you to just come up here with me. Yeah, let's clap for them as they come. And we're believing God for more champions of the mission even now. With less than two months to go, we're believing that God still are calling people for this session. Amen? Amen. We're people of faith, and we trust and we believe God. As our champions, are, they look good. As they're coming up, and you can, you can take your seats. Yeah, grab, just grab your seat. Because even though it's 24 seats here, we're praying today for overflow. Amen. So if you're here and God has been stirring in your heart, God has been dealing with some of you all just this very weekend. And God, you've been wrestling with God, and God has been speaking with you, and you're still wrestling. But if God is calling you to be a Salvation Army officer, I want you to come up. I want you to come up and, and join our Champions of the Mission. You may not have to join the Champions of the Mission session, but come on up. You could be a champion of the mission. The next session next year is Keepers of the Covenant. So if God is calling you to be a Salvation Army officer, come. There's room for you. There's room for you. There's room for you. <laughs> surrender. We just sang, I surrender all. It's all about surrender. It's all about surrender. It's not, I, I learned that it wasn't my will, but it was God's will and what he wanted to do through me. If you're wrestling today, going back and forth, battling, struggling, in, out, release it and give it to God. He will work it out. You may not see it happening. You don't know how. How could God use a person like me when he used me? I'm a walking testimony of what God can do in somebody's life. I said, no, God, not me. Find somebody else that want to do that. I tried to run for God, but I learned that everywhere I went, God was there. And the message was the same. Until I was at the Evangelist Booth College in 2007 at a FOF weekend, now 730 weekend, when I couldn't wrestle anymore. God said, stop wavering back and forth and do what I called you to do. God is saying that to somebody today. Stop wavering back and forth and do what I called you to do. It's not about you, but it's about me, and it's about that scripture. Go everywhere into the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are people dying, and who better to go out and tell them that Jesus loves you, that God so loved the world that he gave us his son, Jesus. Who's willing to sacrifice their child? God loved us so much that he said, I'm going to give you Jesus so you, that you may have life and have it everlasting. But I need some disciples to go out and to preach the good news of Jesus Christ. I need some disciples to go out and tell the world that Jesus is coming back. And many missed him the first time, but he's coming back with power and glory, and every eye shall see him. We need to go out and preach the good news of Jesus Christ. There's still room up here for you. There's still room up here. We thank God for the ones that came. And we know that many of you are still wrestling, and that's okay because sometimes you wrestle. You wrestle, and God will solidify it, and he will bring it to pass. And God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would clear some things up. That you would let people know that their past no longer has a hold on them. That they are worthy in your eyes. That you have delivered them, and you have set them free, and you want them to walk in victory today. Satan have no hold on you, so don't worry about your past. You are qualified. God will equip you and give you everything you need to walk into what he has called you to do. We stand on that today, amen? And I thank you for coming up. Officership is it's not easy, so I want to tell you, if you, I, want, you I don't want you to say nobody told me that officership. Officership is not easy. It's hard. There are going to be some long days, and there are going to be some days when you say, God, did you really call me to this? But you be sure in your calling, because many days, that's all you're going to have to stand on, that God has called me to this. And it's not about me, but it's about the people that need to hear the love of God. So you heard it from me. Officership is not easy. It's hard. 
but you don't have to go through it alone because God will be there leading you and directing you every step of the way on tough days, on hard days, on days when you feel like giving up. God will be there leading you and guiding you every step of the way. And officers, it's not easy. You know it's not easy. And some of you are struggling now, but I want to tell you to keep fighting a good fight. You are not alone. God is there leading you and directing you. Fall on your face and remember this day when we sat on the stage and we signed our covenant. God commissioned us to go out into the world and preach the good news. Remember that fire that you had when you left the school. That burning, that urging, that urgency to go out and to save the world for Jesus. Go back to those moments when you're discouraged. When you feel like throwing in a towel, remember who you belong to and whose you belong to. Father, we thank you for your word today. We surrender all to you. We give it all to you. We lay it at your feet. Father, we thank you that, a, that you are not a God that leaves us alone, but you are a God that's with us every step of the way. Even when we don't feel like it is not about a feeling, God. But we thank you, God. We thank you. We, 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 won't, we may not be where we want to be, but God, we thank you for where we are and what you have given us. We're grateful people today. So, Father, we say thank you. We thank you for the salvation army. We thank you for our mission. We thank you for our message. We thank you for our ministry. And we thank you for the people who are coming to know you through our ministry, God. We thank you for the time we had yesterday and the people that heard Jesus. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. We magnify your name. We lift up on high your name. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah to your name, God, because you are God that is worthy. You are God that is worthy, and we adore you, God. Father, we thank you. We know you're calling people. And Father, as they wrestled, I pray that you would make it clear, that you would bring clarity, that you would settle what needs to be settled. Father, let them know their family is going to be okay. Their kids are going to be okay. Father, I pray that they will release it and give it to you. God, we're, we're grateful people, and we thank you, God, because you have not taken your hand off of us. So we give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you, Father. We pray that you would just lead us. We pray for direction, Father. We pray that you would send us to who we need to go to, and you would give us the message that we need to deliver, God. We're asking that in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you again. We thank you for the reflectors of holiness. We thank you for the defenders of justice. We thank you for the keepers of the covenant. We thank you for the champions of the mission. Father, we thank you for all the sessions that have gone before and all the ones that have yet to come. We give you glory and praise today, and we ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Usher still with this in the room. Where are you? If all eyes could turn this way to Colonel, this weekend marks 70 years, 7-0, when he was commissioned as an officer in the Salvation Army. He said to me on Friday, he said, you know, last, just a day or two ago, I was a Corps officer, and now I go back to being a pastoral care officer. Um, he is all in. This is what it looks like. And we have countless retired officers who are still all in. That covenant that they might have signed many, many years ago. But it's their deep love to see men and women, boys and girls, come to know Jesus that just spurs them on, that gets them up and gives them the energy. And I want to be just like you, Colonel. I don't ever want to give up. I want to be all in for Jesus. That is our new theme. We're taking all in. And we are just going to take that on to all for Jesus. Because everything that we say, everything that we do has to point to him. Amen? Colonel, thank you for being all in for Jesus. We love you and we honor you and our cadets, our lieutenants, and those that are coming. We are praying for you. Can, if you 
as God brings this be- these beautiful people before you in your mind, would you promise to pray? And if you would do that, would you just lift your hands so they can see? Look at these hands. These hands are for you. They've, they're promising to pray for you in the days and weeks to come. We are all in for you. And we know that you are all in for Jesus. And we can't wait to welcome you to that campus. So thank you, my beloved sister in Christ. I see your heart. The Christ in you calls out the Christ in me. So thank you, Colonel. I just want, I didn't want this time to pass 70 years. Amen. God bless you. Well, it's been a great weekend. We've had many people doing lots of things, and we'd love to stay here, but there's a mission field that we're called to. (laughs) She doesn't want to go, see? She doesn't want to go. There's a mission field we're called to. And if you were with us at commencement, our commencement speaker reminded us, we know how this ends. The lamb wins. We have the victory. Stand with me. And let us sing our final song of the weekend, The Day of Victory is Coming. We ask that you stay in place. There will be a recessional and a benediction. And now it is great excitement that we now send out our newly commissioned lieutenants to their first appointments and the defenders of justice session to their summer assignments. Jan Harwell, divisional leaders. Cadet Jason Hauser. (laughs) 
from the Arkansas Oklahoma Division, Lieutenant Colonels Dean and Pam Henson, Divisional Leaders, Lieutenants Corey and Mandy Doggett, Lieutenants Luke and Tanya Swain. From the Florida Division, Lieutenant Colonels Ken and Melody Davis, Divisional Commanders. Lieutenants Kay Lynn and Timothy Green. Lieutenants Amanda and Daniel Jones. Cadet Criselda De Leon and Cadet Sadie Glick. From the Georgia Division, Majors Al and Teresa Newsom, Divisional Leaders. Lieutenant Jamie Dupree. Lieutenants Osan Kwan and Yuni Lee. Cadet Justin Taylor. And Cadet Antoine Terrell. Majors Tom and Julianne Loudon, Divisional Leaders. Cadets Michelle and Timothy Cook. Cadets Bria and Jacob Swearingham.
a day. Are your hearts full? Yes. Thank you for joining us on this solemn and yet joyous day. Our lieutenants and cadets are ready to go, and so the commission is also for us to go. Go now and follow where Christ calls you and proclaim the message God gives you. Wait in hope for God. Live in awareness of his kingdom. And may God be your haven and your glory. May Jesus Christ give you courage for his mission. And may the spirit embrace your soul with peace. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. amen.